Hello, fun people. How are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I like to take science and apply it to all things plants. In today's video, we're talking about mealybugs. Now, I haven't had mealybugs in a hot minute. That's because I really haven't bought any house plants in a hot minute. So I used to have to quarantine all the plants I got from pretty much anywhere in Saskatoon because all of them carry some form of bug. They can come from the actual greenhouse or nursery completely okay. I get home, leave them for a week or two, and bam, I have bugs. Now, the greenhouse I went to always has had mealybugs. Every plant I've ever gotten from them, mealybug. And the two calatheas I purchased also have mealy, mealy bugs. And you're probably wondering, Ashley, what would possess you to just go buy a random amount of these guys. And the reason for this is because I intended to use these for the liquid dirt experiment. So I settled on these guys because they're particularly sensitive to fertilizers, they're sensitive to salts, and they are plants that are gonna tell you what's up. I had some liquid dirt sent to me by Gold Leaf Botanicals out in Ontario. So go check them out on Instagram or go check out their shop. A uh, really cute little company, but the reason why they gave me this was because they only brought it in due to the demand caused by, you know, the ru the ruckus caused by this company. So they were kind enough to send me these, and these were the plants I was going to use for that. However, in the name of science, you can't start with a bummed out plant to begin with unless you're, you know, in going to study the effects of mealybugs and how... XYZ protects them. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to wait now until I can cure these guys of the mealy bug disease. We're at a standstill until that gets down. Now, and of course, I'm going to use reliable resources in regards to research that has been done on effective ways to actually protect your plant against mealies. So let's get into it. Now, mealy bugs can look different. There's seven different types of mealy bugs. The ones I currently have are the long-tailed mealies, and they don't, uh, they, they survive well in warm climates, which is why they survive so so well in greenhouses and if they are in an exposed position and the greenhouse is using biological control such as lace wings or ladybugs we won't see them until we get them home and the larvae hatches in these little nooks and crannies so that's where mine are beginning to develop the mealy bug in and of itself is a sap sucker meaning they don't move particularly fast they're not winged creatures that spread well they only really spread along the plant highway if you have one in your plant room or uh, among your plants and essentially the plant highway is when you have plant A attached to plant B and the leaves are touching and they're able to uh, move across the leaf barrier otherwise they move relatively slow and so if we quarantine these plants or put them in a separate room they will tend to recover on their own as long as the infestation isn't too much and they will not spread to your other plants in your house so long as you keep them isolated now with any plant issue I have a saying called nature tax so I actually have a t-shirt for this now it's 30% or less is just the nature tax it's the tax that mother nature charges for you to just enjoy plants as is meaning if less than 30% your plant is covered or there's less than 30% damage to your plant this applies for disease environmental mechanical say my dog decided to eat half the or three quarters of this plant um, mealy bugs anything like that if it's less than 30% it's salvageable and the plant will recover just fine if it's over the 30% nature tax, you may want to consider just throwing the plant out because the likelihood of recovery is lowered. And then on top of that, the recovery time frame, how long it's going to take that actual plant to bounce back, is just expen exponentially grown in size. So what would typically take a plant to start, you know, putting out new growth and growing happily, it can take, you know, two, three times as long if more than 30% of the plant is damaged. Now the 30% tax, nature tax, that I'm talking about is simply just 
a, a good way of looking at photosynthesis and how much biomass the plant needs above ground to support the below ground biomass. And if that biomass has been disrupted or destroyed in some way, it tends to take longer for it to jump back because what will happen first, even after we've treated and fix the issue, the plant needs to then almost modify or bring the roots into symbiosis with how much upper biomass there is. So if you have a big root biomass and over 30% of your plant has been damaged, then you don't have enough upper biomass to do photosynthesis, produce the carbohydrates needed, the sugars for to support the root mass below. And so we do have to incur some root mass die off and then eventually the plant will be able to balance itself out and focus on the two areas, one of which we don't usually see um, grow and develop in order to make the plant healthy. So with that being said, if you're under 30%, there are things you can do. So let's get into it. So step one of when you have a mealy bug infestation that you need to absolutely must consider is not fertilizing, in particular, not providing any nitrogen. Now, nitrogen as a nutrient is essential to plants, but excess nitrogen or just nitrogen in general can allow for new growth. And right now we wanna to try to minimize as much new growth as possible. Remember, these plants are sap suckers, meaning they're in there for the juices. And if they have a newer leaf that ultimately is softer and doesn't necessarily have that cuticle built up or that out, outer layer of our leaf built up, they are more, these leaves or stems, areas of the plant are much easier for the mealy bugs to infest and ultimately cause damage. So back off on fertilizer and in particular nitrogen. The goal here is to contain what's already present without giving them fresh, easily accessed source of food. So there is biological control methods you can use. Now keep in mind that these will involve flighted friends in your home. And the two big ones are lace wings and ladybugs. Now, because they do have a really uh, tough outer coating, almost like a waxy outer coating, Things like predatory mites and that don't do as good of a job as things that have actual nandible crushers like the lace wings or the ladybugs. But like I said, these are big critters that you would have to have in your home, on your plants in order to take care of the issue. And this may be something that you're interested in if you have a plant room or a larger area that you need to take care of. The next method is chemicals. So there is zero, I repeat, zero effective known treatments for chemical sprays or anything like that. Um, and this is cited right out of the of California's agriculture division. They said that there's non-chemical, um, if the non-chemical methods are usually good enough, meaning the biologicals, and that home and garden insecticides are not particularly effective on these guys. And again, it comes down to that really tough outer coating that makes it very difficult to actually penetrate the shell of that mealybug and ultimately kill it. What they do recommend though for the adults in particular is a spot treatment with isopropyl alcohol. So this has to be a 70% or less uh, solution and what you would use is a q-tip or a cloth or a paintbrush and you would take the isopropyl alcohol and apply it directly to the adults that you find and that means you'd have to you know sit there for a little while I do find that the monocle type lenses can really help you find them a little bit faster uh, so that may be something that you may want to use to get this done but that is kind of the most effective treatment if biologicals are not an option for you now they do recommend that you test spot uh, a treatment area just to see how the plant re reacts to the solution of isopropyl alcohol you're using to determine how much damage it does and whether or not you're willing to incur that damage. Remember, 30% or less from any form of damage, whether it is you know mechanical human-made damage from isopropyl alcohol or the mealybugs is just fine. So if it's giving you like a little burnt spot or something, I wouldn't really stress about it so long as it will only affect less than 30% of the plant. What they do say is that if you wanted to actually treat a plant 
plant where 10 to 25 percent of the plant is infested with the actual mealybugs you can put the isopropyl alcohol in a spray bottle now before you say i thought you said insecticides are not used isopropyl alcohol is not considered an insecticide it's not an approved insecticide by any means so do keep that in mind um, but you can apply it to the plant so you would mist the plant down and you would have to repeat this process every one to two weeks as needed until the infection is gone so that is something to keep in mind uh, what a number of the different universities um, and horticultural departments in the universities do say though is that things like neem or insecticidal soaps while they don't work on the adults because of that waxy cuticle finish on the outside of the adult um, bug they do say it will work on nymph and the actual smaller forms of the mealybug because they have not yet developed that waxy protective exterior so if you use horticultural soap or neem or whatever in conjunction with isopropyl alcohol and you know potential manual removal, depending on how serious the infestation is, you could actually combat it uh, with some ease and not as intensively um, as before. Keep in mind, the goal here is to get the babies. So the adults, while they lay, you know, between 100 and 200 eggs at a shot <laughs> uh, several times a year, they once they're done their life cycle they're done they're not going to produce anymore so we always want to attack the babies whenever possible and so one of the ways to do this would be through insecticides because they're able to actually penetrate the infected areas but keep in mind the areas that they put the actual babies are in the folds and the cracks and that sort of thing, which is why what I like to do personally is blast them under the sink. So these guys I just did, you can notice the leaves are very wet. So I actually went in and I blasted in between all these areas. And the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to actually remove the dead bits. So wherever I had an old leaf kind of encompassing or a bract helping lead a leaf that has now decayed, those will be removed because those are areas that they will actually lay the eggs and it will allow for the penetration of, you know, the pesticide if you choose to use it or the water in this case to actually blast the mealy bugs off to get their job done with uh, the minimal amount of interference. One thing that is common also across all of them is that if you're using a systemic insecticide, pretty much all these universities are saying that they are less effective against mealybugs than any other sap sucker out there. So it's one of the sap suckers that apparently are able to get away with damaging plants still regardless. And they do say that if it's in an outdoor flowering situation that you should never use a systemic pesticide uh, because you do want to be mindful of the potential damage it could do to beneficial bugs like the pollinators and that sort of thing. So while they do work, they're not 110%. The one type of insecticide that they said works the best are the ones that contain pyrethroids. So these ones work better than the oils or the soaps that are out there but they do say again that this is not you know a fail safe it will not necessarily get all of the bugs because they tend to go in the cracks and the crannies so you'd need to monitor the plant or the plant populations as needed with these bad boys i'm going to rinse them with water i'm going to spray them down with endol because i'm dealing mostly with the the egg area so that kind of cotton ball-y looking glob where you can't really see much other than that you know dusting and so that's a sign that i have a lot of babies so in order to take care of those i will just use endol in this case and i will blast the plants with water for the next week or two i want to thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed the video be sure to give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and let me know in the comments down below if you've had mealybugs if you typically just huck the plant or if you try to save them to the best of your abilities i will talk to you guys next time bye